Hello and welcome to Linux Lads. As usual, I'm Shane, and this week I'm only joined by Connor. Say hello. Hello. Yeah, so the other two are out this week. Um, we decided to fire ahead rather than delay it any further. So uh, you're all very welcome along. And um, we're just going to get straight into some news this time. So the first one, probably the biggest news in the last week or two, is the uh, KDE Plasma 6 release. So uh, long-awaited update. It's I think it's been several years since they did uh, a big release like this. Ten years, I believe, almost down to the exact month. So I think... Uh, the anniversary, I, uh, I was listening to one of the uh, late night Linux, and I actually think it was the main late night Linux one because I think Phelan was commenting on it as well. And they, they mentioned that it was all, like almost exactly 10 years ago that KD Plasma 5 came out, which is crazy. Yeah, I've been kind of on and off with KDE myself, but I think I'm definitely going to give this a whirl and see what it's like. Um, I, I, I couldn't stick KDE for the longest time because I just got like decision fatigue looking at it, you know, <laughs> with all the menus um, and all <laughs> that, the different settings. That That is that is very much a thing. I could, I could definitely understand that. Um, and my understanding of it, obviously, I haven't used it yet because it has been... Uh, so I'm on ultramarine linux which is kind of a, a lightly tweaked uh, version of fedora and it hasn't come out for that yet so i haven't used it as of yet but i believe it's kind of just continuing on the same journey that they've they set off on five and it's it's almost like a natural update to five so it's a seamless transition and also apparently it's it's quite stable it's not the case of it's okay here's a hard cut and there's going to be bugs and everything while we figure this shit out uh i believe it's on quite a stable background as well so yeah heard a lot of good things um uh, i think is it nico is the main guy behind us and he has his own youtube channel so if you if you want to follow um like straight from the the horse's mouth in um in relation to kd design and everything like that and sometimes he does reply to 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 um to comments and questions they're saying oh why did you go in this direction and not in this direction or would you ever implement x feature he actually uh, i think he actually replies to them and addresses those in his videos which is very good to see i think believe he's saying obviously this is the first release it's like let's just get some get it out there get some of the more basic tweaks done uh some of the design tweaks and design direction that we want to go in and then there'll be a lot more feature releases later on so this is the very much the stable first one out of the block release yeah i'm very curious to try it out um from the screenshots obviously doesn't look too much different um Hmm. looks maybe i I would say maybe the ui looks a, a tad cleaner um that could just be could just be me though i think i believe that's one of the goals yeah yeah, because that's one thing I didn't like about KD when I tried it previously. Um, I had a good go of it there maybe a couple of years ago, and I actually did daily drive it for, for a few months. Um, and I actually, once I got comfortable with diving into all the menus, uh, I actually grew to like it. Um, I actually appreciated all the different tweaks you could make to everything. And, you know, you can really make the desktop yours. So um, I did appreciate that. But after a while, I just kind of went back to my uh, my good old my faithful old linux mint cinnamon <laughs> after that um but i yeah i definitely want to give it a go um because there are a, a lot of things to like about kde and kde connect was just absolutely invaluable i loved it like it's probably the best thing about kde in, in my opinion um another thing is this is uh, wayland by default so i uh, believe if your hardware is not quite supported or you're on x before and you're doing in place upgrade it's not going to override your defaults and um, same thing with any of the settings that you've set um if they've made a choice and your your tweak of kde does not it's not like they're not going to override your your choices essentially if you do an in place upgrade but um sometimes it might be worth just doing a clean um slate kind of wipe and check it out because you, who knows the the defaults that they've they've changed um to might suit you or or not but um yeah it's definitely worth checking out um the little things like i think they've changed um how you change do you know the kd ed, uh, edit mode mm. so i was watching nick's video which um nick's from the linux experiment um 
uh, and he does a very good uh, job of explaining all of these things. So I'll, I'll uh, will include that in the show notes as well. Um, little things like currently when you go into the edit mode and you like want to change the panel around, it's not quite as intuitive maybe for new people. But once you figure it out, it's kind of second nature. This one, there's kind of more obvious UI hints on what you can do and they're like okay this is where you you change whether it's on the bottom or it's on the top or of your screen this is where you change like auto hide and um those kind of things uh the opacity the um the height of it whether you want big massive icons or maybe reduce them down a bit and it's a lot more intuitive the way they've laid things out which is good yeah, that can only be a good thing, I suppose. Um, I think there's kind of a, a bit of a, I wouldn't say a push, I could be talking about talking out of my arse here, but uh, there is a bit of a, a tendency towards making Linux a little bit more accessible for, for people who aren't already into this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been hearing grumblings of that in the last few years. Uh, so hopefully that's going to that's going to come into this version of KDE and it sounds like it. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely going to be firing up a VM or something uh, just to get a feel for it. Um, I, I'm very curious about this and because, uh, as I said, there's tons to love about KDE. It's it's a great desktop environment and I hope it's as good as I expect it to be. And for people who want to check it out right now who are impatient and their current distro of choice uh, doesn't have it in the pipeline just yet uh you can spin up a vm of kd neon or kos um as previously mentioned in uh, i think in a, in a previous episode and um, those are two distros if you want to check it out right now mm, nice one yeah so next up uh blue sky uh has a, has officially bridged to mastodon um but uh I don't think it's all going quite as as planned. Um, uh, just as a bit of a as a bit of a research, just before we recorded, I actually fired up Blue Sky because I do have an account on it. I got an invite code off uh, Amalith, I believe, like many many months ago, and I think I looked at it twice. And <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I just opened it up right there, and it's basically just George Takai every second post. So because <laughs> uh, I think he was one of the big names to famously jump ship from Twitter X or whatever you want to call it um so yeah uh so he's very active on mastodon blue sky and he's a big cheerleader for uh for all this open social media kind of um movement that we have recently um so uh i was looking into this um bridge between blue sky and mastodon that was always uh, jack dorsey i believe he said that that was always his intention was to integrate with the fediverse at some point um so this to me though this sounds like it wasn't an official bridge. It's just like some people took it upon themselves to, to create this. Uh, just a bit of background here. The article says that uh, many thought that um, such a move would result in Mastodon posts being shown in Blue Sky without any way of the author knowing that uh, their content was being made more public than he initially intended it to be. It didn't help that Blue Sky is a platform that uh, is quite centralised in nature. Uh, contrary to what many Mastodon servers and other services such as uh, the Activity Pub uh, protocol stand for, but it is not meant to work like that. Um, Ryan clarified, this is uh, Ryan Bart, um, the the main guy behind Blue Sky. Um, Some people have assumed that when the bridge goes live, goes live immediately every for diverse post will be visible on Blue Sky and vice versa, and that the bridge proactively takes them and uh, shoves them in and uh, in across in both directions uh, it only does that when somebody first requests to follow a person across the bridge so yeah it's it's um it, it, in activity pub everything is is open you can follow everyone no matter no matter what you don't necessarily have to request that mm. um that you're you the a person you wish to follow um approves of you following them in the in the in the first case it's everything is is public is out there um, which is kind of the philosophy and the idea behind um Macedon and activity pub um but yeah it seems to be that this is not a way of, of doing that i think it's um he has different motivations but i'm not quite sure what the motivations are but yeah it's interesting news nonetheless so it's kind of a, a it's there if you need it kind of thing um 
so it, 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 what I take from this is essentially that Blue Sky is going to just act like it's another Fediverse server that you can connect to if you if you like. Um, so it, I don't think it's going to like completely bridge. Like if you don't want it to, if you don't follow anyone there, then it'll be fine. Yeah, my my I think the uh, that's my take on it as well is that you want if you want to follow somebody on uh, Blue Sky from Macedon technically you have the capability of doing it 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 the underlying technology there supports it but it seems to be that it's not just as simple as following another mastodon account um because of the activity bub protocol is uh, more open than than that so uh yeah mm. i'm all for this like but the, the the only thing i fear is that we're seeing a lot of uh we're seeing a lot of like alternatives to the big social media giants popping up recently but my worry is that it's not going to be enough to make it make it real difference but what what i think is going to happen is we're just going to have all these little splinter groups kind of off doing their own thing on their own networks but ultimately you know the metas and the well it's basically only meta at this point isn't it like <laughs> meta and and whatever the hell elon musk is doing um it's you know that those are kind of the main two players really in in social media because meta you you know you've got like you've got instagram and facebook they're they're two of the biggest ones and then well then tiktok of course as well but like uh, and then you have youtube with google but google could be called a social network um but uh yeah like what my point is is that those guys are not really touchable as far as i'm concerned like i don't think anyone's going to unseat them unless something very you know, earth shattering happens, you know, unless some something big happens, like uh, unless like there's regulation and they're broken up or there's uh, there's m- like a massive controversy or something like it would take something really big for, f- to unseat the, the giants as far as I'm concerned. Um, but, you know, it's good to have those options just kind of sitting there ready to go if 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 that does happen. <laughs> One thing that I, I just... Uh... Re- what I'm reading up, I just was just thinking there that it is noteworthy that when Twitter, like the shit hit the fan with Musk buying it and everything like that, and then the whole reaction to it, the Fediverse was already there. And if the Fediverse wasn't already there and wasn't semi robust, as in it could scale, that all of the mo- vast majority of the bugs and everything like that has so. Uh, were ironed out it was already a semi-established platform it just it wasn't quite at the scale that these big platforms were at but it was already well established and uh, a lot of development had already gone into it if it wasn't in that semi-mature state I mean threads have already adapted uh, the fediverse but in their own way and now blue sky has adapted the fediverse again in their own way it's not necessarily the open way that we think it is mm. actually i think in, in threads you actually can kind of just follow people ac- across on it but i think it's only if your instance um federates with it and then there's all the the massive backlash of like people on instances saying oh um i don't want my instance to to federate with uh, with threads and and everything like that and uh, i think uh Fostodon, which is the one that i'm on have come out and said listen um, it's an open protocol, um, and we're like we support um, having conversations with anyone that you want within reason. So we're it's it's we don't think it's in the philosophy of Macedon to just defederate from every single instance that you that you don't like just because you don't like them. Notable exceptions, obviously, if there's a a Mastodon instance that was all about hate speech and everything like that and was just toxic. They're like, okay, yeah, f- fuck that shit. We're just going to defederate from that one. Or even worse, I'm, do- I'm not going to even mention the <laughs> even worse. But, you know, <laughs> um, that is fair enough. But I think their reaction to it was actually quite mature. Yeah, I mean, I've already kind of seen that. I mean, obviously not to throw shade at anyone, but like I've, I see that on my own Mastodon feed. Like, there, there's very little room for uh, for dissent, um, mm. and I, I don't want to <laughs> sound like one of those uh, the Tucker free speech kind of guys. But like um, my master on feed is absolutely an echo chamber. Um, <laughs> you know, if 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 you're not like if you're not like a hardcore leftist, like 
you're probably not going to make too many friends in that little sphere. Um, so, you know, and th- there is a knee jerk reaction to, to these things that can't be avoided because people are just people. People are, you know, run by their emotions rather than logic most of the time. So, you know, it's to be expected, I, I guess. But yeah, I do, I do favor that attitude of like, look, like what you said, it's, it's not like if we federate with threads or, or blue sky, for instance, it's, it's not necessarily opening the floodgates to any sort of, uh, hate speech or anything kind of negative. It's just federating with another social, social network and another social media platform, which doesn't necessarily contain that stuff. You know I mean? It, you can, you, you can choose who you want to follow. You can still block people. You can still follow the people that you want to yeah. follow. It, it, you know, if it, there's, of course, there's going to be shitty people on those networks, like there is on every network, but you know, it, it, it yeah, I, I think, I think just denying every single person on the server, the opportunity to make their own decision, uh, is, is not the right way to go as far as I'm concerned. Um, there is though, there is a subsection and they're quite a, there's a subsection of this community who, who are very much like, I'm taking my ball and I'm going home. Like I'm going to use like the, the privacy respecting FOSS, like ethical software. I'm going to use all this stuff and fuck everything else. And I don't want to hear it and fuck the big tech giants. And, you know, I can, you know, I do feel that way myself to a certain extent, for sure. I think, you know, I think we need to move in a more like community driven direction with all this stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, people don't know about it, then how is it going to become the norm? How is it going to become more widespread if people don't even know it exists? I, I take a very much pragmatic a- approach to these kind of things. I, I do have uh, goals and I would like, I agree that there'll be ideals that we should strive towards, but cutting people, um, I mean, talking about privacy and talking about communication platforms, um, literally and it's it's come up uh, i don't talk about it that much on this podcast but it's since it's been mentioned a couple of times so i might as well mention it but in the dublin news community this came up recently that i was uh, talking to somebody on on uh, telegram and the telegram chat is bridged to matrix so he was on matrix i was com- having a conversation across the bridge and it was th- this whole thing of he was like of the opinion like at one stage, he literally says, "I do not understand people who who um he use Telegram as a platform." And we're like, "But you're talking to people who are Telegram anyway." Um, <laughs> sure, sure, it's across a bridge, but and then, uh, yeah, it's the whole came into the whole, which is a conversation that's come up many time. Is your your parents, your your siblings, your extended family? Um, and like he was like, well, if if these people want to maintain a, a communication with you, they will they'll respect which platform that you want to be on. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to tell my seventy odd year old dad. Uh, no, you can't uh, chat to me on WhatsApp anymore. He's going to take it personally. He's going to think that I'm pissed off with him. <laughs> That's oh yeah, I couldn't agree more. Like I, I considered trying to get rid of WhatsApp, and me and my friends started a Signal group, stuff like that. Like because apparently Signal's even better than Telegram um, for for privacy. Uh, but yeah, like if if I didn't use WhatsApp, like I just have to call everyone. Like I I, w- I wouldn't have a social life. I wouldn't be able to talk to my family. Like um, it's just that simple. Like I have to be there. Well, I don't have to, but there's a there's a lot of sacrifice involved in not using WhatsApp that I'm not willing to make. Yeah, I, I mean, it's that that um, like the the emotional, the the individual connection aspect of it that is very much real. I mean, it's the, like genuinely. My, I, I'm not, I'm, I don't even think they they would. But let's say if in a scenario where I sat both of my parents down, I went. No, I still love you. Don't worry. I'm switching <laughs> to this platform because I have this, this, and this. They're like, okay, that's a bit strange, but okay, we'll respect that and we'll 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 chat to you on this other app. That's okay. Th- then I would have to have this sit sit down conversation with my cousins, with my aunts and uncles. <laughs> 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 I I had the I had something similar uh, several years ago. I was on Facebook until about six seven years ago maybe and and then i got, i just deleted my account and i've never looked back since and, and i'm so glad i'm not on facebook anymore oh i'm so glad i'm not on facebook so i, I just kind of exited a lot of traditional social media um 
Facebook and Twitter were the only ones I really used though. But uh, uh, I I think my Twitter's still active. I just never use it anymore. Um, but Facebook anyway, I deleted my Facebook. And I remember so, someone someone saying to me a few weeks later, like they thought I had something to hide. <laughs> they, were, they, were like, they were like, what are you hiding? Why aren't you on Facebook anymore? Like, <laughs> it's like, I'm not hiding anything. I just don't want to be on it. And I explained my reasons. And it was like, it was like I was talking to a wall. So some people just don't understand the mindset of like seeing how unethical and how damaging these platforms can be and how they can be misused and it just doesn't even come into their head they're just like that's just the place where you talk to people like you know (laughs) it's it's no harm um so so much so that um well my approach to my deleting my facebook wasn't necessarily that it was uh that i was addicted to it and it was like uh pulling a plaster off because i was making i'm making the ethical choice uh it was (laughs) There was the uh, there was the uh, ethical argument and as also but also the fact that I realized that I literally had not logged into it in about two months <laughs> and then when I logged into it um, of course there was loads of missed notifications but the missed notifications were not were not like genuine shit that I would be interested in it's going oh such and such a, a person's birthday and 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 you missed out on loads of cool selfies of your friends or anything like that that would have been genuinely interesting that would have been a, a social connection no it was all sorts of facebook random shit <laughs> Like you might be interested in this business, or you want you might want to follow such and such a person who's all the freaking algorithm trying to draw you back in. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm so glad I got rid of that. And then I was deleted my Facebook, and uh, no word of a lie. About four or five years later, one of my mates went, "We have we have a like a Facebook chat group, and sometimes you you like uh, it, n- nothing deliberate because obviously we're still mates and we're still mates now." Um. But he says, oh, I just, uh, like, you might miss out on, like, uh, parties and shit like that or us meeting up because I genuinely forget that you're not you're not in that chat group. So he says he says he has to make a conscious effort to um, to say, oh, freaking uh, Connor's not on Facebook. Um, so I'm going to, um, like, send him an invite over WhatsApp. And like, it, he was making an effort, but like he says, sometimes I have to make that extra logical effort to it to do it. And I went, so I reluctantly um, re-signed up for uh, Facebook, but like with a completely different account. The I'm not relying on the previous account that I had, and signed up with just like an email address. So like log in with email address and password. Freaking set set my uh, avatar to to know the V for Vendetta, Vendetta like anonymous logo, <laughs> 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 and then even though he made that kind of pleading thing. Uh, do you think I got invited to any any extra stuff? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, then the same pattern happened again. I realised that I had not logged into that account either in about two or three months. Then logged logged back into it and went, what's the point in me even maintaining this? And then I just deleted it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that was something I was a little bit worried about. But... Um... But thankfully, it, thankfully, it didn't go that way for me. Uh, thankfully, like we we mainly communicate through WhatsApp, and you know, I only I, I don't have a huge circle of friends, which is which is still for uh, Facebook. But yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's you know, it's it's grand because you know I I'm lucky and like what I realized about Facebook was that I think about I'd say at least ninety percent of the people I was friends with on Facebook, I had like three or four hundred friends or something, and I was like. Yeah, I don't same. even speak to half of these people. I don't even speak to most of these people on a regular basis. Like, I, I, I wasn't actually friends with them. Like, I, I would be people I knew from a job five years ago or, you know, someone I'd kind of hung around with a few times, like in my early 20s or lads I knew from school that I hadn't spoken to in about 14 years. Like, it was, it was just, it was all like cruft. It was all like uh, bollocks, really. And uh, what really kicked it for me was that I had a friend who who would just was so obsessed about putting what he was doing on social media, and I've seen this with lo- loads of people. Like they were just so obsessed with putting everything they were doing on social media for every all these other inconsequential people to see, and you know, updating their profile picture with the latest thing they did, and creating photo albums, and they would just spend all their time taking photos of everything to put it on social media. And I was like, can you just be here, like with everyone else, like <laughs> you know, like you're here physically, like is that not enough? Um, and that just pissed me off. It makes me sound like an old bastard, but like <laughs> it's true though. Like I, I'm not a I'm not a passive 
social kind of person like I have to like if I'm going somewhere it has to be it has to be like meaningful you know it has to be I'm going somewhere to do something with these people and you know it's not about what everyone else thinks of it um and uh, i'm but then i'm i'm a cynical old fuck anyway though so <laughs> just like i don't take pictures on holidays or anything i don't take pictures of anything i'm just like people are like oh did you not get any photos on your holiday Nah, i was there i saw it isn't that enough you know that's how was my response <laughs> uh so maybe it's more a me thing i i, I think I, i'm also kind of going in that direction but i think what it is is we're we're finally in our mid-30s <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hate to be hate to be, hate to be that blunt, but yeah, it was. I would, it was, I would say late I mean, mid thirties for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was, I was being kind on both of us when I said mid thirties, um, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I, uh, like the the two or three hundred friends very much rang true with me. But the, where all of that, like the motivation that oh, I must connect connect with everyone was very much um, when I initially set it up was when I was a teenager when I was in secondary school of course in secondary school you want to add freaking everyone because that's what you, you're doing like you want to be popular Yeah, and mm. now you're like do I really give, give a shit about those people's opinions no I don't <laughs> oh yeah now it's the opposite I've gone the opposite direction for, yeah because back then it was like look at all the people I know look how cool I am like um, and you're just like you're just stabbing in the dark looking for any validation possible and but nowadays it's like oh jesus christ the less people i have to deal with the better <laughs> um or, or or you're like you're you're a freaking you're you're a teenager and you're trying to like date the freaking cute girl who's who's over there like oh maybe if i add her as a facebook uh, a friend on facebook like i might have a chance or something like that like that's how you think when you have a te- when you're a teenager now you're like no, you're an adult. You go up and you talk to that person and you get to know them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Social media was handy back then for getting a foot in the door. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, uh, enough, enough, enough of our like geriatric ranting. Um, <laughs> we'll move on to something a bit more boring, shall we? Uh, <laughs> Gnome 46 is to ship with experimental variable refresh rate support. Um, yeah, so this is fascinating topic, but it might be uh, might be interesting to some people. It is isn't kind of an interesting thing that the world is kind of going uh, that way. Um, obviously, technology moves on, and you'd have um, high refresh rate um, monitors. It's, it's it's very interesting that like it's a variable refresh rate. So um, I've come across very variable, variable refresh rates in it would would the I imagine the Steam Deck would would have it. Oh no! It's a um, it's on my phone. Sorry, yeah, that's that's how I I associate it with, and mm. the whole thing of it'll ramp down to to like save power and uh, like ramp up when it's needed. Yeah, a variable refresh rate would be certainly very interesting. I mean, you can imagine if literally all you're doing is watching something on YouTube. Um, like if you have a one twenty hertz uh, monitor that um watching is. Uh, 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second something on youtube then then your computer or your computer screen could like ramp down to to match that and you know um the, these times were like we're all more getting more concerned about using energy and using and being safe around the environment i mean if your monitor is is it like a 120 hertz monitor or even higher like there's 144 hertz gaming monitors and even higher than that um, and if it's constantly pegged at that t- at that amount, then you'd imagine it's using up um, a lot of energy and to be, to fluctuate and only like go down to like much lower rates um, when you when you know don't need it. I mean, all of that uh, adds up. I'm I'm sure that would be a small amount because I imagine mon- I don't imagine monitors use up that amount of energy uh, uh, certainly compared to your actual PC. But all, these are all heading in the right direction. So yeah. That's all very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, one of those changes that mightn't seem very flashy or, or sexy, but like, yeah, it does make a difference. Uh, some random thing that I came across is there is a open source, I believe, AI uh, avatar generator. <laughs> so if you want to upload a photograph to an AI engine and then uh, have it spit out like different versions like a, a cartoonized version of your of your face or like an anime version of your face or something like that uh, some could be interesting <laughs> this is this uh, yeah so um yeah this thing is called uh, huggingface.co um 
so it's <laughs> great name yeah it's a uh, so so yeah it's one of those ai image generators um but it is like it's uh, open source did you say or is it like i believe so privacy um, respecting something like that you know yeah um but yeah like yeah it does i'm looking at it right now it looks very interesting there's a lot of sliders and stuff and stuff like that but my only issue with these things is i i don't know when it comes to ai i'm not a, an, an ai alarmist by any stretch i i do see where the technology can be useful you know we've discussed this ad nauseum before we won't go into that but like um it can be useful in some domains but let's not lose the run of ourselves and start chasing all that sweet vc money that's where it gets a bit grubby and annoying um but uh I just don't know. I just have this mental block about putting my photo into these things. And I see like a cartoony version of myself or a different version of my own face. It just gives me the absolute willies. Like it gives me the heebie jeebies. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Uh, <laughs> so I like, and when people do that, like somebody did that once before, they, they actually put one of my photos into one of these things and sent me like what it put out. And I actually got a little bit annoyed with them. <laughs> just like, it's like this irrational thing that I have. And I was like, oh, no, that's weird. Like, don't do that again. <laughs> just, I can't. Yeah, it's like that feeling when you look at your own reflection in the mirror for too long and you get a bit freaked out. <laughs> um, I don't know if everyone gets that. Like, I've heard some people say they get that, but like some people are like, no, I don't get it at all. It's the uncanny valley nature of it as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like those weird robots that look kind of like humans, but kind of don't. And it's also the fact that it's it's your face. You're like it's it's your face, but not quite your face. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know. It just feels like, yeah, it's weird. I mean, yeah. I mean, if 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 an art, like I think if it, an artist actually no, I I don't like that either. You know those. You know when you're a kid and your your parents bring you on holidays and you go, you go to like a caricaturist. Oh, oh the caricatures, yeah. And they emphasize all your facial features and draw you like sitting on a tiny car or some shit like that and. <laughs> Uh, I used to hate that too. Like I used to throw those drawings out immediately as soon as I could. <laughs> so maybe it's no, not can, just AI. I can, I can sort of see that. Yeah. Yeah. I, ha I had, I had a few of those rolled up like at a work party as well. They had a caricaturist and uh, yeah, there was like me, like a big giant head and a tiny body and stuff. And, and I was just looking at it going, Oh no, I can't even look at that thing. It's too weird. Yeah. Um, I think it, it was like heavily cartoonized. Um, I I don't think I'd mind it as much, but if uh, the closer it actually gets to me, then that would be annoying. Yeah, for sure. So as I was uh, perusing it, its FOSS, I came across a um, link where they compiled um, some very interesting Linux apps. Um, one of them is the. Um, Pomodoro technique, yeah, where uh, you, you where you um you do time management and you set yourself some tasks and if you're if you're into that um technique then this seems to be a very uh, cool thing. One thing that did um well, another one and uh, that stuck out to me is uh I am absolutely terrible at keeping track of my finances, <laughs> <laughs> uh, to be perfectly honest. Um, and my banking app does a kind of a thing where they it keeps like it categorizes things like oh you spent this much in travel you spent this much in freaking coffee shops you spent this much in and whatever but it doesn't really break it down to much more detail than that but um this seems to be an interesting finance kind of budgeting tool for um uh, and it'll, it'll track it over like several a, a, a prolonged period of time like several months so you can kind of see the trends you can see oh you you spent much more on freaking <laughs> chocolate bars this month than you did <laughs> previous month um or something like that um so de yeah, definitely sounds interesting. And the the main thing is that uh, there's no privacy concerns here because everything uh, is done locally. So you just input your data into the application, and then it spits out the graphs and the trends and everything like that. Like that. Um, so it's a handy thing to visualize um, your finances. Um, but yeah, there there's eight. Uh, interesting uh, applications here. One of them is Florp, which we mentioned on the previous uh, podcast. Uh, there's one called Mission Center, which they say that is supposed to resemble more the uh, Windows File Explorer, or uh, not File Explorer, Task Manager. Um, 
but one that is interesting and I don't think I've come across it before and um, I literally downloaded it five minutes before we began this uh, this podcast episode is something called Warehouse. So Warehouse is a way of managing your flat packs. So if you want a centralized place that um, allows you to tweak and manage your, your uh, flat packs, um, this could be a very interesting application. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, some really slick looking apps in there, uh, things I wouldn't have even thought to look for. So yeah, we'll link that list in the show notes. Um, something I've uh, been wanting to to look into again is is kind of nifty Linux apps. Um, it's something I used to be really interested in, but uh, not, not lately. Um, so yeah, but there's a lot of cool stuff out there. So give it a look. So uh, I think that about wraps it up for this week. Um, as usual, um, you can find find all our contact details on linuxlads.com forward slash contact. Uh, we're mainly active in our Telegram group, linuxlads.com forward slash Telegram. And uh, you can find all our Mastodon handles on our website as well. If you want to shout at us, um, you can get in touch by email, show at linuxlads.com. And uh, there's a whole bunch of other links on the contact page, like a Steam group and all that kind of stuff if you fancy um we do post long form show notes and discussion threads on our forum uh, forum.linuxlads.com if forums are your thing um that's just so you don't your uh, message just doesn't get completely lost in the telegram chat um if you want to have kind of a more meaty discussion about anything that okay that about wraps it up um i likely won't be here for the next one because i will be on holidays but uh i'm sure the other three will take great care of you all Okay, that about wraps it up. See you later. See you in approximately two weeks. See you. Bye. Give us money.